Hello wrestling fans, I'm Shane Shatters and welcome once again to Shane Shatters Presents Classic Indies, some of the great independent wrestling matches from all over the world over the last 30 years. This week, once again, we're doing part two. We're celebrating a 30-year anniversary of Super Slam 1991, August 10th, 1991 at the Hagerstown Speedway. Last week, you saw some matches involving uh, Rasa de Voodoo Man and Tom Brandy and a ladies' championship match. This week, we're going to bring you a clip of Hall of Famer's uh, WWE Hall of Famer Nikolai Volkov in action that night, and then the big main event, the former Intercontinental Champion, the Honky Tonk Man, who we've seen many times here on the classic uh, indies, is taking on my mentor and trainer, Neil the Power Superior. Let's go down to the ring here. We want to thank all of you who have supported us and watching our show and coming to our live events. Volkov in the ring here now. Volkov had recently, during the previous year, um, kind of followed the tide of the Cold War ending and become something of an American sympathizer. And he's taken on the big Punisher, who's nearly seven foot tall himself. And he is all over Nikolai here in the early going. I think these two resolved to have a match where the, the loser would no longer wrestle, which, for whatever reasons this took place, I'm not entirely sure. Uh, Punisher... The big whip here on Nikolai. Oh, the big Ruski caught the boot. Big spin, or half a spin, and an atomic drop. Nikolai was such a lovely man, and I don't know how many of you have uh, had the ever ever had the opportunity. He lived in Baltimore, pretty pretty much lived in Baltimore for the last forty plus years of his life. Uh, wrestled a lot of the independents around here just because he was a short drive, and everyone knew who he was, but. What a, what a great man. In terms of his wrestling style, not a guy who's getting paid by the hour. A strong man, a brute, not specializing in the finer arts, just coming full bore at you. I wrestled him on many occasions, and I got to tell you, these were some of the more difficult matches that I ever had, to be fair. Uh, he, he was relentless. He had great cardio. Uh, he was not a, a, a master of the catch-as-catch-can style, once again, relying more on his strength. Croatian born, I believe. Well, what happened to the clip? Again, some of these clips, as we have said, are, are not not complete. So we're going to bring... Is he going to be coming back here? Or do we blank out for a second? Or what exactly... Uh... I do not know. Well, we may be in the... Uh, maybe be in the midst of a... Uh... What we will call a oh hey there's there's our always popular beep screen oh okay let's go to the main event we're going to the main event there he is ladies and gentlemen the honky tonk man shaved off his sideburns <laughs> Kevin the Truth Casey the manager accompanying him this is the big main event this was something of a uh, Neil Superior graduated from North Hagerstown High School with a local favorite, but this was the first time that he, in here in his hometown, he was taken on nationally known competition. Here he comes. Oh, jogging his way to the ring as he so commonly did. I mean, he was just a, a, a physical marvel. I mean, just likable, good-looking guy. I love Neil, and I, and I miss him to this day. Um, as we, um, not only this is the 30th anniversary of this, of this uh, event, um, we're at the, uh, we're approaching the 25 year mark of his, his unfortunate passing. So, um, bringing you a lot of these great matches that Neil had during, during his time means a lot to me. I want a special shout out to his mom, Pat, who almost certainly is watching who's become a very dear friend of mine. There was just, there was nothing to dislike about him. I mean, as, from a wrestling pa fan's perspective, he was he was that homegrown, strong, powerful baby face. And Honky Tonka, jawing with somebody of the ringside spectators here with Kevin Casey over his shoulder. This 
was the big main event that night. I think he was talking to, I think it was Tricky Dick and uh, and Neil's brother uh, Dwayne New, New New Kierkoff. Again, I shot this match from the balcony and I got the match in its entirety, but I love these up close, more professional looking shot matches because it's easy to, they're easier to follow. Honky Tonk sticking with his strength, which is running and ducking for cover until he feels like the advantage is, the time is right for him to take advantage. I don't know if he had a shaving accident or whatnot, but he had, as you can see, the sideburns were gone at this point. Which was one of his calling cards. And running once again. Your referee is Dave the Wave McAllister of Baltimore. Maybe the WWF took my court. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> Lots of great wrestling action, and if you think that we're running out of clips and footage to bring you, you're absolutely wrong. I have I have an encyclopedia. I am, for lack of a better way of putting it at this point in time, I am the curator of professional wrestling history in this area. I have more matches, more posters, more programs. I was involved in more of it than almost anybody. I saw more of it than anybody. I was a fan from the time I was eight years old. I grew up. I grew up wanting to be in this and wanting to be around this. And at almost fifty years old, I still I still love wrestling. <laughs> Honky, telling the uh, fifteen hundred plus on hand that he doesn't want to wrestle. He wants to sing. This may have been ended up being the tights that hung on the wall in the wrestling school. Hmm. Remember that? Did you ever see those? Yeah. I wish I had those. I think I think Rambo has those, but I I don't know. It turns out I ended up getting a pretty significant box of stuff here. I, he's <laughs> given a lot of stuff away. Yeah, he gave away. He gave me some posters, but I mean, some of this stuff I just got a a, a care package um, from the estate of, of Tricky Dick. And with more things to come, I've, 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 been, I've been promised and assured. But uh, the stuff that we found so far, and Frosty looked at it really briefly with me here earlier this afternoon when we started recording these episodes. Some fascinating stuff, and not, and not only the history of wrestling. Good Lord. The crowd chanting grease ball. Look at, look at the, I mean, I'm just going to tell you. And, it, and wrestling's one of those things where you can gush over this without sounding like you're in any way, you know, differently oriented. Mm -hmm. Neil Superior was built like nobody. I mean, he was in tremendous condition. I mean, he's he's probably carrying like 20% body fat at, at, at the absolute maximum at this point. I mean, he he is, I mean, honestly. He looks better than Honky. Yeah, well, Honky's, Honky, no, Honky never had a body. I mean, Honky was never a body. I mean, but Honky looks decent. When you compare him to guys like from today, Honky doesn't look bad here. <laughs> Tie up. Honky with a clean break on the power. Crowd really getting into reaching a fever pitch here. They've been waiting all night. They've seen a great card of action. And this is the one they paid to see, ladies and gentlemen. Neil is 28 years old here. I know this because his birthday is April 6th. It's the day after mine. But he was nine years older than me. Mine's on the 8th. You're, you're what, April 8th? Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's funny, as there's a lot of guys in wrestling who I know, a whole bunch of the guys who work for me and my crew, mm -hmm. who all of us had like birthdays from like March 30th, like through April the 20th. Tons of us. It was it's just very strange. Frosty and I are bringing you the action here. 
week in, week out, and a big hip toss from the former Intercontinental Champion. Bringing you the action week in, week out here on the uh, Independent Rewind, Shane Shatters presents not only that, the, the Independent Rewind program itself with Stephen Sarks and Frosty Rob, and of course the periodic special programming like we had several weeks ago when we brought you the outstanding event from Riverbend Park. So, and we're hoping to bring you more of those type of events here in the coming weeks. Hopefully, we can get some footage of the big night, August the 4th, in Petersburg at the Tri-County Fair, and September the 4th, when we return to Riverbend Park. Colorado tie-up again. Honky swings a big right and misses. And the power with a big hip toss. And a big, oh, look at this. Oh, all of it. Got all of it on that slam and Honky's duck, ducking and dodging, baby. Going to try to recover here a little bit. Dave the Wave trying to encourage him back to the ring. Kevin Casey trying to do what he can. You can't really see in the right. There's a bunch of people in their stands. Oh yeah, because like this, yeah, this is on this is on the front stretch. Yeah, yeah. This here is just on the dirt track of the of the speedway. But up here to the right is the whole uh, is mm -hmm. the whole grandstand, and it's it's huge. I'll br I'll, I'll I'll switch tapes one time, and I'll bring you the stuff that I recorded from up in the bleachers, from the top row of the bleachers. And it, it was a big went, time turnout. I went to a show once here, and it's it's not a bad turnout ever. Yeah, but it's like back then wrestling, wrestling was wrestling. I mean, you had some like smaller time guys, but mm -hmm. now it's like it's it's so much of, you know, and, and you can you can attribute so much of the of the um of the of the pro wrestlers from this area you can attribute it to that guy right there because if it wouldn't have happened, I never would have been in it because as much as I loved it, I wasn't going to travel to Reading to train or Baltimore and, mm -hmm. and all. I mean, just I didn't think it would have happened. I genuinely don't think it would have happened, but him starting a wrestling school right here in Hagerstown and me knowing him and, and, and following him and watching him around the area, that's what got me in it. And they probably wouldn't be wrestling right here today if it wasn't for Dick Kirkhoff either. Uh, you know, that's, well, that's absolutely true. I mean, that was hand in hand. I mean, D Dick was the promoter and, yep. and, and Neil was the was the talent. And, you know, God bless them both. I mean, and I, you know, both of them are no longer with us. And, you know, obviously Neil's been gone for 25 years this August. It, and you know, Dick just passed away back here in May, but this area doesn't have the sustainable type of wrestling. Now you could, you could say what you will about, and some of it you, the wrestling <laughs> that that's taken place around here through the last some several years. Some of it's going to be rewind, just saying. Huh? Right, but not to get off on a tangent here. Honky Tonk really wearing out the arm of Neil the Power. Love this close up, uh, the close up footage. You know, and his mother, Pat, has told me so many times how much she enjoys watching. I mean, these were, this stuff was just in boxes in her basement until almost two years ago. And I called, and I had a couple matches. I just wanted to see if she wanted me to put some of the matches I had on DVD. Turns out she had like this entire treasure trove of stuff in her basement but didn't have a VHS player. It, it none of it had been used. I mean, it was just stuff that unfortunately was left behind when, when when Neil was, you know, when when Neil was. Let's just be honest. Neil was killed. But so I just took it in and started trying to copy as much of it as I could. There's so much of it, and some of it was usable, and some of it is you know shot in the back of the high school gym and stuff was other stuff was professionally shot like this. Crank it up. Work that arm, Neil. Tear that arm off. Stuff that hadn't seen the light of day. No, and it never would have. It never would have. And thank God that she let me have this stuff. Thank thank God. I mean, and I've copied it and I've returned it because, I mean, I got a lot of VHS, but it's like, you know, I didn't... DVDs take up less space. Yeah, oh yeah. I can stack DVDs <laughs> in a little ring. Yeah. And you know, and I've started buying, like, old uh, like Coliseum videos and stuff of the... Uh, like all, all online, mm -hmm. Coliseum video VHSs and stuff, just because I, I get hot like that on collecting stuff. But thank God she still had this stuff. You know, I'm if Dick had it, I might be getting some of it now, but I might not be, because it's very possible that Dick would have passed it off to to Rambo instead of Pat passing it off to me. Or just kept it at school and or, ended up in Rambo. Yeah, he's just cranking that arm up and what. I'm really just not even calling this match. 
I mean, it's just like this stuff just brings back so many memories for me when it when it comes to him. So it's just you know, I just you know, he was my friend and he was my teacher and he 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 took such good care of me uh, um, and taught me so much and he he did it he he also did it for others, but I think he. I stayed really close to him, and I did a lot of his training, and I did a lot of, I mean, as we've discussed, I did a lot of his booking, like, after I was in the business, I did a lot of the booking for the shows. I mean, I didn't have anything to do with bringing in the stars, but, like, mm-hmm. the underneath matches, I was doing all that stuff. Honky just wearing him out with those short punches. Neil's groggy. Look at a real good look there. I love this. Love this camera work. Love this camera work. Just a big, good-looking athlete. Not a whole lot of cuts this time around. No, no. This yeah. match is pretty. Yeah. This match is pretty intact, as opposed to the other stuff that we've shown. That was the they were, and there was stuff that we showed in earlier editions too, from earlier in the card, like early editions of the. Um, we had Johnny Lawler and uh, and Axel, and we had the midget match from this same thing. But sometimes my long-term planning not so good as he blocked that punch. And I want to get the stuff out there. Then I start thinking, well, how this is an anniversary type of thing. And, you know, this is a good, kind of a special occasion. And this is almost like doubles as one because we're like the 30-year anniversary of this event and about the 25-year anniversary of, of his of his death. And I just, you know, I want people to know what a good guy he was and what a good athlete he was and what a, what a, what a good performer he was and, and what an inspiration he was to me. And, you know, he took good care of me, training me, and, and oh, Kevin Casey tripped yeah. him. Get him. Get him, Neil. Truth, I know you're out here watching and you're listening, but you might be getting your ass handed to you here now. Kevin Casey's a friend. Honky from behind. The heat, I mean, it's, it's probably still 90 degrees and it's dark. Yeah. It's almost 10 o'clock at night. I'm here. You know, I'm here. And the heat, I mean, the, the people, when, when you build heat in a wrestling match and you can start to feel it, and people are in like in that physically uncomfortable position of just being like, oh, I'm sweating and I'm, you know, my hair is getting messed up and I'm, I'm hot and I'm sticky and my kids are acting like, and, and, and then you watch everything's going on when you're watching quality professionals, guys who know what they're doing or just, you know, taking you out to, taking you to the, to the far edge. You know, and if, I think the camera catches it. There's, I mean, there's some old timer who physically gets involved in this here towards the end. I mean, I'm on spoiler alert, but I don't know. We had to go to court. Hmm. I mean, it, honest to God, I mean, I had a clip and they had a clip. This old guy hits the ring and gets. We had to go to court over it. I had to go with, with Dick and Neil, and we all had to go to court one, one day because this guy was suing. Because of course, of course, he was like. He was like 80 years old, but you don't know that. And Kevin Kevin Casey put one on him. He had to. You got to, back then. Oh, into the post. You, you back then guys would hit the ring on you. I mean, people didn't. I mean, people literally didn't treat this stuff like it was horseshit. And they, they thought it was. At least we get caught up in the moment and thought that it was real. And they could. I mean, when when you could get taken away like that, that was the goal. Honky reaching into his tights here. Oh. Con- Common tactics here, as you've seen the you've seen honky tonk in action in previous uh, incarnations. Here on classic indies, but yeah, we had to go to court, and of course, you know, the, the old guy said he couldn't piss anymore, and he couldn't pet his cat, and you know everything else because he took a kick to the head, and it was, and 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 of course, you know, Kevin went out into the crowd and kicked this guy in the head. Not this guy tried to pull him off the ring apron, which is what actually happens. Chaos rules. Bet you still wish you had that hair, Kev. I bet you I've called less of this match than anything I've ever done. And more about talking about the... Yeah. You think that's all right? Yeah. Sometimes the action can just explain itself. Sometimes the backstories are... You know... And I've wrestled. Backstories are what people are interested in. Yeah. A lot more than. Yeah. Hey, I'm calling a 30 year old wrestling match and, mm-hmm. and so forth. I mean, maybe Just people. kind of know what the, what's going on and the, the atmosphere around it. And... Yeah, you see these guys. There's no barricade. These yeah. guys are running up and smacking on right. the apron and stuff. Which I believe is why Maryland requires barricades now. 
Yeah. Everybody, everybody's with him. Yeah, you feel it. This is wrestling. Mm-hmm. To me, to me, this is wrestling. And you know, somebody, some twenty-year-old kid might be watching this and say they're not doing any flips and they're not doing super kicks and everything else. You, you can, you can give that shit. You can keep that shit. This, to me, this is wrestling. The, the, the up and the down, the feel, the physicality's there. Oh, the physicality's there, but it's not so overwhelming that you can't follow it. This is more about emotions. This is more about passion. This is more about good versus bad. White hat, black hat. You know, and they and they treat it like it's like you know like the referees are, are putting counts on and trying to keep guys from interfering. It's like now nowadays it's like we've taken all the rules away. You've taken all the rules away. You've taken all the. Um, you've taken all. I mean, just imagine going out here and playing football where they can just do whatever. Or basketball, there's no rules, there's no traveling, there's no... I mean, you can just knock people, block them, knock them out of the air, do whatever, and there's no penalties or no fouls. That's a, Wrestling's predicated on the idea that it's that's an event. Look at, look at the close-up action here. Just great storytelling. In my, you know, my personal feelings aside, I, I, I personally don't... Don't care for a lot of things with Wayne Ferris, the honky tonk man. He was a great performer. He he knew how. He he knew who he was as a as a performer, and he he played to those strengths. You know. I'm gonna check the arm here. I want to get those boots. Those boots he's wearing right there is a big part of what we're doing right now. There's something. There's something that's lost the time. I'm raising the arm. Yep. It, 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 again, it's all. It's all just yep. part of the. Mm-hmm. It's all part of storytelling. And see, this is. I mean, and this is the guy I learned from. I mean, and, and you and you can see that in some cases, like in some of his early matches, as we looked at the collection. I mean, he was very raw. But he understood the psychology of it. He understood how to do the bumps and how to do the how to make the matches. So that's who I learned from. That's who Doug learned from. That's who Switchblade learned from. That's who Keller learned from. Uh, Gino, uh, uh, so many guys who, who who were lucky enough during that period of time, and now he's got the control with the uh, with the tape that uh, Honky's been using. So many of the guys who had the benefit of being around him, and I was around him more than any of them. You know, so I mean, we we oh, see you see, see, you see him, him running there. See, there he's right here. Oh, they clipped it. Oh, damn it! I thought we had that. We had that. I mean, because I saw it. I saw the other angle of that where they were running around because Casey jumped up on the apron because I saw it in court. Hmm. I saw it in court, and how the hell was it not on this clip? I don't know. Honky. Oh, say is that it? Yeah, that's it. Okay. I thought we had the full finish, yeah. and we didn't. Uh, Neil by disqualification, in case you're uh, keeping score at home, uh, won that match by disqualification, and we had an altercation here that was off camera. As you started to see a little bit of a disturbance um, over in the far corner, security came over with the, uh, the the old gentleman, and maybe one day we can uh, I can bring that back in, and I can you know, just there's been a, there's been a lot of stuff that's happened through the years that I caught, like, uh, there was one time over in Hedgesville, there was a guy at ringside who was, who was filming real close, and, um, Rambo was wrestling uh, the Iranian butcher, and they spun Rambo around and threw Rambo through the ropes on top of the guy. I mean, cause I guess they were, you know, they were trying to bust his camera up, there was uh-huh. like a whole big thing, there's all kinds of weird stuff like that that happened, but I hope you enjoyed the last two weeks of checking out the, uh, 30th anniversary clips of Super Slam, and, and the coming weeks... If you got a chance to go see live professional wrestling, come and see it. August the 4th, we're going to be at the Tri-County Fairgrounds with the Rock and Roll Express and Rhino. If you got something that you want to go see it, go support independent wrestling. Get out of your house. The pandemic's over, and we hope to see you out there. I'm Shane Shadows, and thank you for watching Classic Indies.